clips can have a different appearance depending on the height of the track. If they are minimised, they appear vertically symmetrical, but once the track height is expanded a little, they change appearance to consist of a header and body region. The various tools change their function depending on whereabouts over the clip they are in relation to these regions. We'll see that as we work through the various editing stages and tools. We've already seen that step sequencer clips can be rolled out to any length as required and they repeat or loop their contents for each iteration. MIDI clips and audio clips can also do this, but first they need to be converted to a special kind of clip known as a groove clip. This is simply a matter of selecting the clip and pressing Ctrl plus L or right clicking on it and selecting the choice from the right click menu. Once converted, they too can be dragged out to any length and will loop their contents for the length they're dragged out to. A groove clip can be identified by the rounded corners. To convert back to a regular clip, just press Ctrl plus L again. This will return the clip to its original length though. If you want to maintain the length the loop has been drawn out to, select the loop and then bounce the clip from the clips or right click menu. Notice though that not all loop clips are groove clips. There are other types such as acid and rex loops. These behave in a similar way in that they can be rolled out to the length required, but they can't be converted to regular clips using Ctrl plus L as they're not groove clips in the first place. Use bounce to clip to change these types of loops to regular clips. We'll take a look at the specialized loop construction view where groove clips can be edited shortly. The clips themselves are stored in tracks. I've already mentioned the track header, names and the widgets briefly, so now we'll take a closer look at those. I have the advanced widget display selected so we can see all of them. Bus widgets are very similar to these and I'll point out any differences as we come across them. At the top are the MSR controls for muting and soloing tracks and the record widget and input echo we saw earlier. Where any of these lit, they are active. A bus doesn't have a record widget as you can't record into buses. Track icons can be changed by right clicking on them. You may find loading a suitable icon for the type of track can help you identify tracks more easily. The edit filter I mentioned earlier. This is the control that chooses the data type to edit in the track pane. The exact choices here will depend on track type as well as the effects inserted on the track, but the principles are the same. Select the type of data you want to work with from the list, and remember that this is available via the HUD as well, which is called up by clicking the middle mouse button or pressing T. Beneath this are widgets for turning automation read and write on or off, freezing synth and archiving tracks. An archive track doesn't play back, but also doesn't use any resources. Helpful on tracks that you want to keep, although you may not actually be using them. There are sliders for volume, pan and gain used to control track level and its position in the stereo field. To the right is the effects bin where effects can be loaded and we'll see those when we get to mixing. We looked at the inspector earlier and all of these controls are duplicated there as well as a couple of additional ones such as a phase switch and an interleave button for forcing a track to be treated as stereo or mono regardless of the actual track type. The inspector also contains the per track EQ. We'll see this in use when we start mixing. The two widgets towards the bottom left of a track are there to open the take lanes and automation lanes. We'll look at automation lanes in detail later. Take lanes show clips that overlap in their own lane. For example, you might record several takes of a guitar solo into a track. The lanes will show these takes each in their own lane for even greater control. They behave in a similar way to tracks. They have their own name field, mute, solo and record buttons, as well as an area to make notes about a take. They also have their own edit filter, which works in the same way as the edit filter on tracks. They can also be resized vertically by click dragging on the lane divider. Buses don't have take lanes. There are further track options available from the track inspector. Either press Ctrl plus Shift plus I, or click on the track tab in the inspector. Here, a track can be renamed, color changed, and the time-based used for automation changed. 